Well, hello everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. You might be wondering how it is I'm playing a GameCube game on a system that can definitely not play GameCube games. Well, the answer is pretty simple. I'm streaming this game from my PC. And this concept is really nothing new, but I've had a heck of a time getting this running on my retro handheld devices. And part of that has to do with the fact that the most supported tool when it comes to game streaming is an app called Moonlight. And Moonlight is specifically made for computers with Nvidia GPUs. And I don't have one of those. I have an AMD GPU in my computer. But I finally cracked the code on all of this, so I'm going to show you how to get this all running on your retro handheld devices. And this opportunity to stream things to your retro handheld device really opens up a whole new world of gaming. In addition to playing things like GameCube on a handheld, both in its native 4x3 or in a widescreen format with the widescreen hack, you can also tap into Stadia and stream AAA games through the internet. And so I'm going to show you how to do both things here in this video. I'm primarily going to focus on the RGB 10 Max running RetroWaz, as well as the RG351V running Arc OS. For now, these are the two operating systems that run Moonlight the best, but we'll also test out a couple other firmwares and see where they're at in terms of development as well. Either way, it's a super exciting prospect and I'm happy to introduce it to you. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, so as always, I have a written guide linked in the video description, and there it's going to list every single device that's supported and also where to find the Moonlight app on your various devices. On ArcOS, it's as simple as using Portmaster, which I made a video about previously, and on RetroWaz, it's actually built into the firmware. Now, if you have an NVIDIA GPU that can run an app called NVIDIA GeForce Experience, then setting up Moonlight is almost automatic. If you want to check whether your computer is capable of that, I've got a link in the video description that'll take you to the system requirements. So if you have one of these GPUs, the process is very simple, and you should be able to consult the written guide to see how to install that. But for everybody else, including myself, we're going to have to use an app called Sunshine. And Sunshine is a companion to Moonlight, which will allow you to stream games. So the first thing you want to do is go into the Sunshine releases page, and then download the latest Windows release. Once you have Sunshine downloaded, go ahead and extract those files. And then within here, you're going to find a sunshine.exe file. Let's go ahead and open that up. It's going to open up command prompt and show you a bunch of text. If it gives you a warning about network connections, just select yes for everything and allow access. And this Sunshine window needs to be running at all times while you're streaming. So now let's go into our computer settings and actually connect to Sunshine. We're going to open up our network and then open network settings. Within here, click on that properties button and then scroll down to the properties section. There it's going to show your computer's internal IP address. Go ahead and copy that IP address. Next, paste in your IP address, then do a colon and 47990. And this is what the address should look like. If you get confused about any of these steps, just make sure to check out my written guide. I've written it all out for you. Then press enter. It might give you a warning about the connection not being private. Just go ahead and select proceed. Now you've connected to Sunshine. First thing you need to do is set up a username and password. You can make this whatever you want. After you set your username and password, it's going to refresh the screen and ask you to add your username and password. And with any luck, you're going to get this Hello Sunshine greeting, and you're now ready to connect your device to your computer. So we'll start with RetroWaz first, because this one actually has Moonlight embedded into the firmware already. First thing you want to do is press start and go into your UI settings, and then look at visible systems, and then make sure that Moonlight is toggled on. After that, go ahead and back out of the menu, and you should now find the Moonlight section. Within here, you're going to have several different options. What we want is server pair with server. So select that option. And as long as your device is connected to the same network as your computer, it's going to give you some pairing instructions. It's going to give you a four digit pin that you're going to need to add onto your computer. So make note of that pin, and then go back to your computer, go into the pin tab, and then type in the pin that you saw on your device. Then press send. After that, it's going to connect to your device. From then on, you're paired. You don't need to do this again. After it's done pairing, it's going to back out of this menu. And now you're going to have several different options to connect to. Typically, it's going to say something like desktop or Steam. We're going to primarily connect via Steam. Now, there's one trick you have to do in order to get Steam running. You have to go back into your computer, go into the applications, and then here you'll see Steam Big Picture. Change the application name to just the word Steam, so remove Big Picture. Then scroll down and select Save. Now you should be good to go. When you try to open up Steam on your device, it's going to open up Steam on your computer. Let's try that now. And look at that, we're opening up Steam. Not only that, it's going to boot into Steam Big Picture, which means you can use your controller to navigate through everything. Super handy. 
And now, assuming that you have your games installed onto your Steam library, you can access everything that you have within Steam. And even from this interface, you could actually go into your entire library and download games onto your PC to launch them directly onto the device. So let's start with a PC game. We'll just start with the original Portal, because I know that's installed on my PC. And just like that, it's booting right up. I'm going to open up an old save game from years ago. I think this is like Room 17 or something like that. I can't even remember where I'm at in this game. But as you can see, the controls are working well. And I did zero configuration before turning this on. Now one thing I did notice is that the fire buttons are L2 and R2, which are not very comfortable. So you may want to go into the settings and change them out to L1 and R1 instead. Okay, let's try out another PC game. How about Braid? Now, if you've never played Braid before, this is one of my favorite platforming games. It's kind of a mixture of platform and puzzle games. And it has a time travel mechanic to it, which is one of my favorite things in the world. Either way, if you've never played Braid, maybe check it out. Now let's move on to emulation. So I've already added Dolphin as a non-Steam game onto my Dolphin library. So by selecting it, it's going to boot Dolphin onto my PC. Now it's not a perfect seamless experience. For example, you can't navigate through Dolphin using a controller. You have to go back to your computer and then jump onto your mouse and actually boot the game via the computer. But after that, you can start playing the game on your device. One thing to note is that sometimes Moonlight would freeze. And I found it would freeze at a specific section every time in certain games. For example, here in F-Zero GX, it would freeze at this point every time. So to kill Moonlight, you hold down L1, R1, and then press select and start. And then just jump back into Moonlight again. And that'll actually re-establish your connection and you can jump right into it. But that's kind of a pain with F-Zero in particular because it actually starts the race without you. And I always forget to pause the game before I kill the app. Because when the screen freezes, the game actually still plays and you can even control it. So in that case, you can actually just pause it, reboot Moonlight, and then jump right back into the game. Now, the onboard Wi-Fi that's on the RGB 10 Max is not the best in the world. It's a 2.4 GHz connection, and the antenna doesn't seem to be very strong either. The game's playing perfectly fine right here, as you can see, but if you experience any sort of hiccups, there is a nice workaround. And that's the fact that the RGB 10 Max actually works with a 5 GHz dongle. So, you grab an OTG adapter and then your 5 GHz Wi-Fi dongle. I use this one here, which I'll have linked in the video description. And then it's going to connect to the internet instead of the internal Wi-Fi. Just make sure you turn off the internal Wi-Fi antenna on the top of the device itself. And from then on, connection is going to be exactly the same as before. But I did find that this resulted in a much smoother gameplay experience. But of course, it still freezes at the same spot in F-Zero. And again, I forgot to pause the dang app and then I canceled out of it, went back into the game, and the race had started without me. Either way, you can see on the 5 GHz dongle here that it's running super silky smooth. It's a really enjoyable experience, and I'm running with the widescreen hack on here in GameCube. Another thing you can do to improve your gaming performance is to not upscale the image on your computer at all. So I'm actually running the native resolution of GameCube on my Dolphin on the computer. And it doesn't look so great on my monitor, but it looks super nice on this small 5-inch screen. And just in case you were worrying, despite the fact that I was delayed in starting up this race, I still finished as number one. Which is a testament to how good the streaming works, and how my skills at F-Zero have improved over the past year. I guess testing does have its benefits. Now in terms of emulation, you're not limited to just Dolphin. You could also use things like the Wii U emulator, PS2, or PS3 emulators. Anything you want. It really comes down to what your PC can handle. Personally, I really like to use Wii U games because it has a really great catalog, and all the games play natively in widescreen, which looks really good on the RGB 10 Max. But yeah, that's how it works on the RGB 10 Max. So now let's talk about the RG351V. Now if you saw my previous video about Portmaster, you'll know that this is a tool that's now available in ArcOS devices that allows you to download ports immediately onto your device. And one of the ports they have included on the list is Moonlight. So go into your Portmaster menu, and then download and install Moonlight. From there, just go ahead and go into the Quit menu, and then Restart Emulation Station. Now when you get back into the menu, you should be able to go into Ports, and then you'll find Moonlight. Now, this has a different user interface than we saw previously, and the connection's a little bit different as well, so I'll walk you through that. First thing you want to do is go into Settings, and then select Pair PC. Now, the way it pairs is a little bit different. It's going to ask you to actually put in the IP address of your computer. So, go back into that property setting that we saw earlier, and type in your IP address. It's a little bit of a pain to type this all out, because the period is on the alphabet section of the keyboard, whereas the numbers are not. So you have to swap back and forth every time you want to go from a number to a period but you only have to do this once. Okay, once you've added your IP address, it's gonna do the same thing, it's gonna ask you to type in a PIN. So back on your computer, you type in your PIN on that PIN tab that we saw earlier in this video. It's the same exact process here. 
After that, you've now paired to your PC. The other thing you're going to want to do is go into the app section and remove that word big picture again. So now it just shows the word Steam. And there's a bunch of other settings in here. For example, you can change which app you want it to boot from. In addition to Steam, you have all sorts of other emulators you can boot. In general, I like to just go through one interface, so I'm going to keep it at Steam and then add all my emulators to my Steam library. And I'll show you how to do that here later in this video too. There are some other resolution and frames per second options you can make. I found I had the best performance with 720p at 60 frames per second. Okay, so once you're ready, just go ahead and select Start Streaming Steam. And there you go, just like that, it's working. Now one thing you may find is that your 16x9 display from your PC is showing up a little bit squished on this 4x3 display. And honestly, that's probably going to limit some of the games that you can play on this screen. And you might think to yourself, okay, let's go into the emulator. We'll change the graphics to turn off the widescreen hack. And we'll keep it at native resolution here. And also, instead of forcing a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, let's change it to 4 by 3. But when you start up a game, you're going to see that you're seeing the 4 by 3 version of a 16 by 9 display. So everything's squished again. So what you actually want to do is you want to force 16 by 9 and then not turn on widescreen hacks. So this is a trick to get 4x3 games to look like 4x3 on your display. It's going to make them fat on your PC, but then it's going to stream to the perfect aspect ratio on your 4x3 display. And so just like that, we're playing F0GX at the original 4x3 aspect ratio. So in this case, GameCube looks really good on the RG351V, but probably not some of the more modern systems, because they're going to look squashed. Okay, so next thing I want to do is show you how to play Stadia games on your device. First thing you want to do is log into your Stadia library and then copy the URL of this library itself. Next, open up Steam and then under the library tab, you're going to see an add a game option at the bottom left. Select add a non-Steam game. And this, by the way, is where you're going to add your standalone emulators like Citra or Dolphin or things like that. What we're going to do is actually browse the exe file of Google Chrome. So we're going to hit Browse, then the C drive, and then Program Files. It might be in your Program Files x86, just check either one. Then go down to Google, then Chrome, then Applications. And within here, you'll find your Chrome.exe file. Select that, and then select Add Selected Games. And now you'll see Chrome in your Steam library. Right-click on that, and then select Properties. Now you can change the name to something like Stadia Library. And then, under the Launch Options, type in dash dash app, and then space, and then the URL that we copied earlier. Now, every time that you try to open up the Steam library Google Chrome, it's going to go directly to that page. And that's basically it. We've now created a shortcut to our Stadia library. So back on the RGB 10 Max, you can see here I selected it and now I'm navigating through my Stadia library. And it already recognizes my controller, so that's a really nice way of getting AAA titles onto your device. Okay, so now let's try running Moonlight on 351 Elec. We're going to go into the Portmaster wiki page and then grab the Moonlight files directly from this GitHub. What I'm going to do is download the moonlight.zip file. Then I'm going to open it up. And then I'm going to take these port files and then move them into the port folder of my 351 Elec SD card. And sure enough, it'll show up on the port section of your device. But unfortunately, the controls just don't work. So until they get working controls on 351 Elec here, unfortunately Moonlight is just not a viable option. But hopefully a fix is coming in the future. So let's try another similar firmware. Let's try Retro Arena. Now I'm using the most recent release of Retro Arena for the Odroid Go Super, which is Release Client 5. And within this, much like with RetroOS, it has its own Moonlight section. No need to download anything. Now unfortunately connecting to Moonlight via Retro Arena requires manual configuration and I have all that written out on my written guide, but even then after you have it all set up, you'll find that the controls and the sound work, but not the actual visuals. And as of making this video, the developer is aware of that and he's working on a fix right now. Now if you saw my Portmaster video, you know that Retro Arena also has Portmaster embedded into it. And sure enough, you can download this version of Moonlight and put it into your ports folder too. And if you go into the ports section, you can boot it up. And you can get into the settings, and you can even try to pair your PC. But I found, unfortunately, at this step in the process, it stopped working. I wasn't able to pair my PC at all. So there's a little bit more work needed for Retro Arena as well. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'm pretty excited about this prospect. I had tried to get Moonlight working on this device almost a year ago at this point, and I was not successful. And the fact that we have a very easy way of doing that on ArcOS and RetroOS devices is a really cool thing to me. And honestly, playing GameCube games on a 4x3 display like this has been a bit of a revelation to me, because it has such a nice screen on the RG351V, 
and it works really well with the internal Wi-Fi on this device. And I expect that once ArcOS is working on the RG351MP, it's going to be an even better experience on that device. Of course, that device doesn't have internal Wi-Fi, so you'll have to have a dongle sticking out the entire time, but I'm not even going to get into that, I've already talked about that in my previous videos. And if you're interested in playing widescreen games, like AAA titles from your PC, or Google Stadia, or even running widescreen versions of emulated games, then the RGB10 Max or the Odrego Super running on the RetroOS firmware is going to be just a joy to play. And the nicest thing about having Moonlight embedded into these firmwares is that you don't have to switch SD cards between, say for example, 351 Droid, which is an Android version of the firmware, and these other firmwares too. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming.